today's lesson so we are starting quantity and unit this is what we are starting with so hope we are going to understand this we are going to know each and every concept so the lesson for this week and next week will be done public on youtube so that we get to see how many people are going to join us then we start our usual lessons which will be private so this week we are having public uh, lessons uh, on youtube and uh, next week but the other week all our lessons will be done privately so for those that could like to start tuitions this is the right time to start uh, so let us see how we can uh, go about this and uh, those that are new to my youtube channel this is my official youtube channel make sure you subscribe so we are talking about uh, quantity and uh, unit so whenever we are talking about a quantity whenever we are talking about a quantity a quantity is anything that can be measured so a quantity a quantity i want you to get this a quantity so a quantity is anything is anything a quantity is anything that anything that can be that can be measured this is a definition of a quantity so a quantity we are talking about the physical quantities so these are physical quantities that uh, i'm talking about so a physical quantity is anything that can be measured so anything that can be measured is referred to as a quantity so we've got physical quantities there are many physical quantities in physics these physical quantities can be divided in two two so we've got two types of physical quantities they are what we call so we've got two types of physical quantities so i want you to be writing these things this is how we start these are basics that you need to know in physics so physical quantities i've said that we've got two types of physical quantities so we've got two types two types of physical quantities so we've got two types of physical quantities two types of physical quantities that you need to know and understand so these two types of physical quantities the first one is called basic quantities the first one are called basic quantity i want you to get this are called basic quantity the second one are called derived quantities these are called derived quantities so it is called derived quantity so these are the two types of physical quantities that we have we've got basic quantities we have derived quantities so these are the two types that we get to have basic quantities derived quantities so the other name for a basic quantity we can call this as base some books will refer to this as basic quantity so just one and the same basic and base quantity we are just talking about the same thing so i want you to get this understanding let us now look at uh, basic quantities let us look at basic quantities now so we look at basic quantities i want you to get this i want to make physics very simple this is the foundation that we need to have in physics so basic quantity i want to start with basic quantity so under the basic quantities there are few things that you need to know and understand so whenever we are talking about basic quantities these are quantities which only have one si unit 
So basic quantities have one SI unit. Have one SI unit. This is what you need to get. So basic quantity, a basic quantity is a quantity which only has one SI unit. The first one, so these are fundamental basic units. The first one that we get to talk about, so the first one that we have is mass. So I want you to get this and I want you to understand this. It is what? It is mass. So mass, SI symbol. So what is the SI symbol for mass? The, what is the SI symbol? So the SI unit symbol it is what kilograms so this is to show you that mass is measured in kilograms so whenever i give you a question in physics then you check that the, the mass is in grams you need to convert from grams to kilograms so now the si unit now the si unit the si unit that's where you get to write kilograms so this is how i'll be writing them kilograms like this let us move to the other one let us move to the second one the second one that uh, you need to know is called time time is a basic quantity what is the si symbol for time small letter s have you seen then here this is what second this is what you need to know this is what you need to understand like this. So I want you to get all these things that I'm trying to discuss with you. All these things that I'm trying to explain here. So we've talked about time. So this is the second one. Time is a basic quantity. Why? It only has one SI unit. As you can see, it is what? Second. We go to mass. Mass is a what? Mass is a basic quantity because it only has one SI unit which is kilogram. This is kilogram. This is what you need to know and understand. Let us move to the third one. So let us move to the third one. We are still talking about uh, this. So let us move to the third one. We move to the third one. So under basic quantities, what is the third one? The third one that we get to talk about is amount of substance. So amount of amount of substance. Amount of substance. This is what I'm going to do. Amount of what? Amount of substance. So amount of substance is a basic quantity. Amount of substance is a basic quantity. So it is measured in what? What is the SI unit? So SI symbol we say it is a mo. Have you seen mo? Then SI unit, it is mo like this. This is how we get to write it. We move to the fourth one. We move to the number four. So the number four that uh, we need to know is called electric current. It is called what? Electric current. So this is electric current. So electric current it is measured in what? That is the SI unit that I'm talking about. It is measured in what? So it is measured in amps. It is measured in what? Amps or amperes. So this is the symbol. Then in words, this is what? Ampere, like this. This is how we get to write it. So this is how you need to write it. Make sure you are able to write all these things down in your book you understand them clearly because this is a foundation that will really help you in physics if you don't know this then you cannot answer any question in physics let's make sure we get this and understand them we go to the number five number five is called temperature so number five is called what temperature Number five is called temperature. So under temperature, what you need to know, temperature is measured in what? Kilo is measured in kelvins, capital letter K. Kelvins. In words, this is kelvins. Have you seen kelvins like this? This is how 
you need to do them this is how you need to get them so we've got the sixth one the sixth one is called what is called this is the one luminous intensity so luminous intensity is measured in what it is measured in candela it's measured in what candela candela like this the symbol is what the symbol is capital letter c small letter d have you seen this is what so this is the si unit this is the si symbol so don't mistake this so if i tell you to write the symbol for luminous intensity you say this is what this is what you get to write the symbol capital letter c small letter d the word this is the word which is candela so luminous intensity is measured in candela symbol c d this is what we get to know the last one that uh, we all need to know the last one so what's the last one make sure you copy all these things down so what's the last one what's the last one number seven so what's the last one the last one is called length this is the last one length is measured in what length is measured in meters small letter m then in words this is how we write meter so length is measured in meter so this is what you need to know and understand so these are the basic units that we have these are the basic units that we need to know and understand so let's make sure we get all these we understand them clearly we get each and every point that i'm trying to explain in here so these are simple basics that i believe no one can fail so we are able to understand this we are able to get all the concepts and all the questions that can come in an exam so this is all under basic quantities we now go to drive the quantities let us look at some derived quantities so we look at some derived quantities let us look at some derived quantities we look at some derived quantities so let us look at some derived quantities so we look at derived quantities this is what we are going to look at derived quantities so what are derived quantities from the word derived these are formed so they are formed so these are formed by combining by combining so when we combine so these are formed by combining basic quantities by combining what basic quantities this is how we get to form them so when you combine two basic quantities you form a derived quantity example is speed so we talk of speed speed is a what speed is a derived quantity because it is formed by getting what distance and time so whenever we are talking about speed what is the si symbol si symbol is meter per watt per second so in words how can you write this in words how can you write this you say meters per second meters per watt per second this is how we get to write it we talk about uh, something else we talk of let's say force have you seen we say force force is a drive the quantity so force it is what newton force is a what a uh, si symbol is newton so in words we say newton like this so how is the force formed we have not yet started dealing with any calculations we are yet to do calculations but uh, what we need to know for now what we need to know is that just this simple thing we know that force is equal to mass times what acceleration 
So all these are formed, you check in here, we've got uh, mass, which is kilograms. We go to acceleration, acceleration, we've got meters per second squared. So when we form all these basic quantities, we form one derived quantity, which is what? Which is a force here. When we get, we say kg multiplied by meters per second squared. When all these get to combine, we form what? What we are calling a newton. So a newton is a derived quantity because it is formed uh, by combining a lot of basic quantities. So we've got quite a lot of them. We've got acceleration itself. Acceleration. Acceleration is a what? Acceleration is a derived quantity. So acceleration is a derived quantity. So the unit it's what? Meters per second squared. So meters per second squared. Meters per what? Meters per second squared. So this is the uh, symbol for what? For acceleration. If you are taught to write in words, you write properly meters. So you write it properly meter per second meter per second squared. You write it nicely. Square squared. This is how you get to do it like this. So these are some of the things that we need to know and understand. So we need to make sure that we know all these things. We get the necessary concept. We understand what we are taught. We get the basics. So I want you to know this and I want you to understand everything that I'm trying to explain in here. So these are some of the things that uh, you need to know. These are things that you need to get. So what we've talked about so far is that we've got basic quantities and derived quantities. Basic quantities, these are quantities which only have one SI unit, like mass, time, Kelvin, which is temperature. Have you seen? So those only have one SI unit. We talked about drive the quantities. So these are quantities which are formed by combining a lot of what? One or two, by combining two or more basic quantities. We talk of speed. Speed, in speed we've got time and distance, which is a length. Newton, Newton we've got the mass and the acceleration. Acceleration itself is also a derived quantity. So these are some of the things that you need to know and understand. So the same way I've given them, that's the same way you are supposed to get them. That's the same way you are supposed to understand them. So if you are given a question in an exam, deliberately, they just bring distance which is in kilometers. So which means you need to convert from kilometers to meters. That's how you need to do it. So let us look at some conversions. We look at some conversions. So this is just the foundation. This is what you need to know. These are the basics that uh, you need to know and understand. Let's say you are given a question, convert. So they are saying convert. We want to convert two kilometers to what? To meters. You convert two kilometers to meters. How can you convert this? You know that converting from kilometers to meters the easiest way to answer this is where you just get to multiply this by a, uh, a thousand. You know that one kilometer is equivalent. One kilometer is equivalent to what? Is equivalent to 1,000 meters. Then you are given two kilometers. Two kilometers is equivalent to what? You put X. So kilometers, kilometers cancelled. 1 times x, it is x. x is equal to 2 times 1,000. We've got 2,000 meters. So we've converted. This is just one and the same thing. Hope you cannot face some challenges on this part. Let's make sure we know and understand this part clearly. So let's make sure that we get this, we understand this 
clearly. So this is how we get to do them. Let us now, let me give you some uh, questions. So before I give you some questions on this, let us look at uh, another part, which is uh, a simple part. Let us look at uh, this one here. What if you are told to convert, let's say you are told to convert 20, 20 uh, kilometers per hour to what? To meters per second. This is what you are told. So what if you are told to convert this to that? What are you supposed to do? So what you are supposed to do for you to convert this to that, it's uh, very simple. So I'm going to show you how you are going to do this, how we are going to understand this. What you need to do now is uh, this. This is what you need to do. So if you want to convert from kilometer per hour to meters per second, you need to get that value, then divide it by 3.6. So if you are changing from kilometer per hour to meters per second, you need to divide by that. So meaning 20 divided by 3.6, you are getting 5.55 like that. Have you seen? 5.5555 like values are just going. So you say meters per watt per second. So this is how you get to convert. This is the easiest way in which you can convert. But if you are changing from, let's say you are changing from meters per second to kilometer per hour what you need to do is that the value which is given you need to multiply it by 3.6 so this is how we get to convert this is how you need to do them so if you are given let's say you are given something like 40 meters per second you want to convert to, you want to convert this to kilometer per hour how can you do that just say 40 multiplied by 3.6 what value are you getting you are getting 144 so it is 144 kilometer per hour like that so that's how you need to do it these are things that you need to get and understand so i'm going to give you a simple exercise i test your knowledge i see if we have understood like I've said, this week and next week, all our lessons will be made public on YouTube. So that we try to gather people that uh, will start with us. So that even as they start, I just get to share these videos to them. They catch up and we learn together. So this week and next week, be informed that all our videos will be made public on YouTube. Thank you so much. And uh, if... Uh, a person wants to start tuitions with me can contact this number. This is my number. We are enrolling for mathematics, chemistry, physics, uh, uh, for the internals and the GCE candidate grade 11 and 12. So this is my number 0971066747. This is my number 0971. 067747. You can contact this line, then I'll be able to help you. Thank you so much.